flooding in our area tonight and stormy weather at the Civic Center this morning. Jeff? Reds win and Kenny Anderson calling it quits. Jeff? A bit uh, more rain overnight, but a bit cooler. Lori? We'll have details coming up next on the News Journal. Good evening, I'm Lori Omnis. You'll want to be careful if you still have some driving to do tonight. The entire two-thirds of the northern part of the state is under a flash flood watch, meaning that areas around streams and rivers prone to flooding could be hit. The only, uh, not only are roads and bridges slick with rain because of the storms today, but bridges in some cases are not there at all. In our area, the county with the most problems appears to be Hardin County, where two bridges are reported out because of high water. County roads 190 and 180 over Silver Creek, just south of Kenton, impassable at the bridge points. Hardin County has reports of a third bridge out, but that hasn't been confirmed, nor have reports of cars being overwhelmed by the water been checked out by authorities there. Deputies and highway patrolmen are at the scene of known bridge washouts, but if you do have to drive, you may be the one to find a bridge washout, so do be careful. Shelby County reported some scattered power outages as the result of scattered thunderstorms that hit all of this part of the state from the afternoon on. Jeff Fitzgerald will have more on our weather later on. Stormy weather as well of a different kind at the Civic Center today. Management at Teledyne Ohio Steel will no longer take in-person applications from those people seeking to fill striking workers' jobs. Following a large turnout of protesting labor backers there this morning, future applications now to be taken by mail. The 300 or so labor sympathizers claimed a victory after the plan to take applications at the Civic Center was abandoned about an hour after it began this morning. Mark Beyer has more. Instead of using the company site to hire replacements for striking workers, Teledyne Ohio Steel insisted on using the Civic Center. The result this morning was a confrontation between labor and management, with local law enforcement agencies caught in the middle. Union members representing locals from as far away as Defiance gathered this morning to support Local 975 striking Teledyne Ohio Steel since April 5th. I think it's a, this is a community that needs to stand together. It's a time we take on these corporate type people who want to do that, but just break unions and, and have poverty level wages again. The company had planned to accept applications this morning, but most of those interested decided to stay away. I heard that they were going to be higher, and I figured I might come out and try to put in an application. But it don't look like I'm going to be able to get in. They told me come over here and stand. I told them I'll be over here and standing, and they better not come over this way. It was Evans who would be involved in a violent skirmish just minutes later as a bystander taunted union members. That incident, coupled with a few earlier, was enough for Civic Center management to call off the use of the facility as a hiring site. The Civic Center will be closed for this kind of negotiation. Law enforcement officers then began the task of escorting the job applicants away from the area, and the union members soon dispersed. Teledyne negotiator Robert Barton was bitter about the result. He blamed the lack of effort by the law enforcement agencies for the cancellation today. Uh, we had hoped that law enforcement would be able to get them in and out. Uh, they, uh, they told us they were unable to, uh, to get them in and out. So they provided a victory for the union. Barton and other Teledyne officials were escorted out the rear entrance of the Civic Center. Sheriff deputies attempted to prevent TV 35 cameras from videotaping that exit on the request of Barton, who said he was embarrassed by the situation. Mark Byer reporting for TV 35 News. This morning's labor activity in the town square put law enforcement officials in what they said was an awkward position. Allen County Sheriff Charles Harrod said nothing except that it put his department in a no-win situation. Lima Police Inspector Don Stratton was pleased that a couple of pushing incidents and a little kicking episode were the only incidents of the event. Stratton said the goal of the department this morning was just to keep things low-key. Uh, actually, in the overall situation, I am very happy at the way it turned out because it turned out with a minimal amount of problems. Um, it was a bad situation for us because we were placed in the middle. 
the location of the event and the type of the event that it was put the officials of the company on the inside the employees of the company and supporters of them on the outside and us right in between trying to keep the situation from exploding and I think that uh, that was accomplished with very little incident so naturally we have to feel that everything came out to our advantage. Mm -hmm. No one was arrested. Teledyne's Robert Barton was asked why the applications were not taken at the plant where a court order limits the number of pickets and union supporters could not have gathered in large numbers. We felt, first of all, it was close to the police department. We thought it would uh, help that way. But secondly, it's a good facility, one that we have used in the past numerous times for other purposes, but including negotiations. Uh, it is, we thought, would be more secure. We thought it would be much worse if we tried to hold it at our own plant. Uh, we, we thought other cities uh, have placed ads, they have interviewed replacement workers, and have been able to, uh, to get people in and out. After the labor issue is all settled, some are worried that there may still be differences of opinion on whether or not the Civic Center was an appropriate place for partisan labor situation. President of the local Veterans Council, Mark Moore, thinks the Veterans Memorial Civic Center should not have been used for this purpose. We, the veterans of Allen County, think it is a farce that they're using our, our, our memorial, Veterans Memorial Civic Center, for, an app, for applications for a job. They're putting guys out of a job. And the veterans of Allen County that I've talked to so far are totally against it. And they don't, you know, they don't feel that they, they should be using the building downtown there, the regular unemployment office. And as long as they, you know, as long as they need us, the veterans will be here to support them. This morning's activity at the center coincided with a court appearance for one union leader who's charged in a different strike-connected incident. Jim Boyd pleaded innocent today in Lima Municipal Court to charges of criminal mischief, a misdemeanor. That charge resulted from an incident May the 22nd on State Route 117 east of Westminster. Boyd is accused, accused of throwing Christmas ornaments filled with paint at a truck that had left the Teledyne plant with a load of steel. Independent truckers who have crossed picket lines say that some tires have been flattened as the strike at Teledyne draws on without a settlement. And what effect will all the action today have on a big labor vote tomorrow? Teledyne employees are to vote on a final package being offered by the company after two days of talks there last week. The contents of the proposal is not known, but it does not have the approval of the union's bargaining committee. Don Johnson for Sisters. Hi, I'm not the Don Johnson from Miami. I'm the real Don Johnson from Cleveland. But I do have a few vices of my own. Like the food and service at Sisters, I love it. A famous name in salad bars is Sisters. There are over 40 different items, even fruit and pasta salad. And a divided platter to keep all those great tastes separate. So next time you crave a little celebrity treatment, try Sisters, okay, pal? This was a tense day of questioning for Elliot Abrams, an assistant secretary of state, as he appeared before the Iran-Contra committee. Abrams was grilled about his alleged role in supervising efforts to aid the Contras. Abrams said a former U.S. ambassador did not know what he was talking about when he named Abrams as heading a government group involved in Contra aid. He admitted he had contradicted some testimony before another congressional committee several months ago, saying he was not involved in raising money to aid the effort. But he said it was completely honest, but completely wrong. The House has sent a resounding message to the White House today. Lawmakers want to be consulted on U.S. military plans in the Persian Gulf if they weren't in Central America. House members voted overwhelmingly today to require a detailed report from President Reagan on plans to allow Kuwaiti oil tankers to fly U.S. flags and be protected by American ships. Fourth District Congressman Michael Oxley of Findlay, one of three of Ohio's 21 congressional delegates who voted against the Congress being informed. Paul Volcker is not staying on for another term as chairman of the Federal Reserve. Appointed by Jimmy Carter eight years ago, Volcker has established personal confidence with the nation's financial community, often credited there with controlling several years ago inflation that was then running in double digits. 
His replacement is longtime Republican presidential advisor Alan Greenspan, as Steve Porter tells us. It was no secret to the president that Paul Volcker did not want to continue as Federal Reserve Chairman. But there still was an element of surprise when the president made the announcement. I accepted Mr. Volcker's decision with great reluctance and regret. He has served with distinction on the Board of Governors and has been an historic chairman during this time of economic recovery and expansion. And more surprise when he chose economist Alan Greenspan to be the new chairman. My dedication to our fight to hold down the forces of inflation remains as strong as ever. And I know that Dr. Greenspan shares that same commitment. Greenspan indicated he couldn't agree more. Inflation is never ultimately tamed. It only becomes subdued in our type of societies. And that's what uh, Paul's contribution has been and why it's so extraordinary. I think that uh, one must be vigilant against inflation at all times. Volcker's success in fighting inflation will make filling his shoes very difficult, and already there's well, plenty of skepticism. The fact that Paul Volcker is not going to be reappointed is a serious loss for the country, a very serious loss. He was a man who did a superb job as chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. He was responsible more than anybody else for breaking the back of inflation. Proxmire is chairman of the banking committee, which is holding Greenspan's confirmation hearings. But others are openly pleased about Greenspan's nomination. He's a man who has, has served presidents before, served his country. He's a highly respected economist, uh, and he's a good choice. The White House made the quick decision on replacing Volcker on the eve of the president's departure for the Venice Economic Summit. It should prevent some uncertainty some of the Allies might have felt about the future course of American economic policy. Steve Porter, NBC News, the White House. We all have our favorite sports. Physical fitness is fun and healthy for everyone. When your activity is curtailed by injury, St. Rita Sports and Physical Therapy Center can help. Their friendly professional therapists, using the finest equipment available, will provide you with the therapy and counseling you need to guide you down the road to recovery. When your injuries keep you from your favorite activity, ask your doctor about St. Rita Sports and Physical Therapy Center. They'll get you onto the road to recovery again. A new $6.8 million, 96-bed jail in Hancock County, one step closer to reality. Today, county commissioners and county employees in Hancock County gathered at the new jail's site for groundbreaking. H.U. Tuttle and son of Lima will be the general contractor on jail construction, and a new jail was a must. Right now, uh, we, uh, it's going to help us uh, house the inmates that uh, the uh, judges are going to be sending us. Right now, we have an overpopulation, and we have to use other county facilities uh, so we can uh, keep the courts uh, going. Hancock County Commissioner William Recker says it has been a long and hard road to finally get the actual construction underway. He says the new facility will handle all Hancock County's needs. The jail is going to cost uh, $6,822,000. We're looking at a completion date in about 18 to 24 months. It will be a 96-bed facility. It will include the sheriff's office, uh, an arraignment room, and, uh, of course, dispatch 911 for the whole county. What are you looking at as far as staff increases? We'll be doubling the size of the staff because uh, basically we're doubling the size of, uh, we're almost tripling the size of the population that we can hold now. And uh, uh, due to the jail, jail standards and regulations, we will be doubling the size of staff. Meanwhile, Bell Center is looking for another police chief. The chief, William Mason, got his walking papers because, according to the mayor of Bell Center, he was spending too much time on the investigation of last summer's fatal shooting of his predecessor, Chief Murray Griffin. The mayor had ordered a halt to the nearly year-old investigation for concentration on other duties. Mason admitted that he had continued to investigate Griffin's death and that of Phyllis Mullet, which occurred at the same time, but he said he did that primarily on his own time. A fire in a high-rise office building in Chicago a couple of weeks ago was put out with only one death. But relatives of that victim say her death was not necessary, and they're upset. The body of 31-year-old Nancy Clay was pulled from a 20th floor office shortly after 4 a.m. According to tape recordings of calls the woman made to 911, she reported being trapped by fire and smoke at 3.02 a.m. 
Fire equipment was immediately rushed to the scene. There is no tape of the fire dispatcher reporting a woman seeking help on the 20th floor. Why didn't the fire department dispatcher, after Nancy Clay's first call, tell the fireman at the scene that Nancy was in the building? But four minutes after her first call, Nancy Clay dialed 911 again. This time, she was on the floor, fighting for air. Help is gonna die. 20th floor. Firemen are there, ma'am. One Illinois Center, 20th floor. What's the address? One Illinois, one Illinois Center. Uh, I can't breathe, it's too smoky. One Illinois Center. 111 East Wacker. All right, 111 East Wacker, the 20th floor. They're on the way up there. Somebody's going to find me before I die. I'm in the, oh, I'm in an office on the northwest corner. Northwest corner of the floor in an office. Okay. Trying to stay down. All right. I can't breathe. I'm going to pass out. All right. We'll send an ambulance. Hi. The Clay family attorney says he will sue the city in addition to the building management company if fire officials don't explain unanswered questions about how they responded to the woman's pleas. In Chicago, Paul Hogan reporting for NBC News. In our area, storms caused some problems today. Jeff will have details coming up next. <laughs> First, a philosophical question. There's certain basic hygiene that you simply have to follow. Have you ever noticed when you're driving that anyone who's driving slower than you is an idiot? Say, look at this idiot here. Will you just look at this idiot just creeping along? Don't miss George Carlin in concert live on the Lima Civic Center stage. Tickets are available now at the Lima Civic Center box office, or you may charge tickets by phoning 224-1552. For years, people have asked, how does Shawnee Optical provide such high-quality eyewear at such affordable prices and do it all on the very same day? Well, a lot of credit goes to Shawnee Optical's own optical laboratory. Within minutes of receiving your prescription, Shawnee Optical's team of professionals begin producing your eyewear using some of the most technologically advanced equipment available today. Just another reason why you'll find that nobody compares with Shawnee Optical, Lima and Finley. Well, we're looking at that rain that's been going through our area throughout the afternoon and evening to continue in our area. But the next couple of days could be a bit cooler. So before we go on, let's take a look at our satellite map for around the country. We take a look at that map now, and uh, that comes out of the Pacific Northwest. And as it comes out of the Pacific Northwest, you see it, it comes, uh, comes up here right down into the Midwestern Plains, up through the Buckeye State, off up into Canada, and then off the eastern coast of Canada. So now as we take a look at the cloud cover, you see the storm system right here that came through our area that caused us most, most of our problems this afternoon and this evening. It moves off to the east. We are still getting some effects from that system. we got a high-pressure system just off the eastern coast of Georgia that has pushed some of the moisture and heat up in our area. Closer look at the storm system that came through early today and this evening that's caused the flood watches we have in our area. We are off uh, the flood warning or the, fl uh, the thunderstorm warnings and thunderstorm watches that went off effect at 11 o'clock. But we are still under a flood watch that will be there throughout the evening. Looking at our highs today, we were 80 throughout the Buckeye State surrounding states. But you see the cool air coming up from Canada just coming down off of our area. That will be the cold front coming down from Canada that will give us our cooler temperatures the next couple days. Looking at our lows for this evening and into the morning, 60 degrees for our area. And there again, you can see the cool temperatures out here in the northern plains. Let's take a look at our weather, WLIO weather radio, wait, radar. Excuse me, I'll get it out. Don't worry about it. We look at a big cell of thunderstorms off here just down to Shelby County and near Dayton, just north of Dayton. Shelby County over Sydney, moving through All Glaze County. Through Allen County, we still have one more cell that will be coming through Allen County in not very much longer, looking at 40 to 45 minutes. We're looking at a couple cells move off Marion. Let's take a look at our temperatures across the state. 69 degrees for Lima, 67 for Finley, the high in the state. Cincinnati at 74. This week at Clyde Evans, we've got something exciting. Double coupons. Is that right? Double coupons? That's right, Dave. But that's not all. How about Clyde Evans vanilla ice cream? $1.99 a gallon. 
Pepsi or Mountain Dew? $1.59 a carton. High dry paper towels? 39 cents a roll. And Little Debbie snack cakes? Only 69 cents. So stop in this week at Clyde Evans for prices that are out of this world. Looking at our temperature currently, 69 degrees here in the Lima area. The barometer is 29.99 and steady. Our humidity, 93%. We've had just under an inch and a half of rain throughout the day. Some cities over in Indiana have reported, believe it or not, six inches of rain this afternoon. The winds are out of the southwest at 12 miles per hour. Our sunrise, 607. Our sunset at 903 tomorrow. Today's high, 83 degrees. Today's low, 66 degrees. Looking at tonight's forecast, showers and thunderstorms, possibly this evening, heavy at times and severe. We're still under that flood watch throughout the evening, our low near 65 degrees. For tomorrow, thunderstorms are likely continued warm. Our high will be a very comfortable uh, 70 degrees up in the upper 70s. For Wednesday night, a chance of showers throughout Wednesday night. But then clearing by morning, we'll have a beautiful day by Thursday, our low 55 on Wednesday evening. And that extended forecast, Thursday, sunny and cooler, mostly sunny. It'll be beautiful. On Friday, fair conditions. And on Saturday, the beginning of the weekend, fair conditions. Our highs will range from 70 to 80, 70 on Thursday in that area. And on lows, will range in the 50 to 60 degree range. So we are under that flood watch throughout the evening. Our thunderstorm watches and uh, warnings are out of our area for now. Don't go away. Jeff Lanzi will be up with Red's Highlights. Stay tuned. If you're about to replace the windows in your home, think about cost. Then think about quality. There's no contest. In the long run, inexpensive is not always a bargain. The Window Place offers vinyl interior for warmth, aluminum exterior for strength, triple glaze to eliminate storm windows. Right now, the Window Place is offering a $10 Clyde Evans gift certificate for homeowners with a genuine interest in window replacement. And be sure to enter the houseful of window sweepstakes. See the Lima News Saturday's TV section for entry blank or register at the Window Place across from De Havens. Good evening, everyone. The Battle of National League Division Leaders continued tonight at Riverfront Stadium. Last night it was the Cards, tonight it was the Reds' turn. Taking a 3-2 decision behind the five-hit combined pitching performance of Tom Browning and Guy Hoffman, Nick Asaski continued his toward hitting pace with a home run and single, including the game-winning RBI. Here's Todd Withorn now. He has all the highlights from Riverfront Stadium. Start in the top of the first from Cincinnati. Terry Pendleton, the batter. He comes through with a base hit into left field. Cal Daniels will come throwing home, but it's not in time to get Ozzie Smith. That gave the Cardinals a 1-0 lead. Now to the top of the fifth inning. It's 2-0 St. Louis with the lead. Jack Clark, the batter, hits a deep fly to left center field. Eric Davis comes running, will scale the wall. Robs Clark of the home run, then spins and guns it back to the infield to keep Ozzie Smith from advancing on the play. To the bottom of the seventh inning, the Reds are trailing 2-1. to one. Dave Parker with a sharp single pass first base. This one goes into the right field corner. In the meantime, Eric Davis would come home and score easily. That tied the game at two apiece. Later in the seventh came the game winner. That's Nick Asaski. He comes through with a bloop single into center field. Dave Parker was on third. He'll come lumbering home. The Reds go on to beat the Cardinals 3-2. to two. I'm Todd Whitthorn for NBC News. So on the National League scoreboard we go, Pat Pasillo goes for the Reds tomorrow. Elsewhere it was Chicago over Houston, 13-2. Montreal, no problem with San Diego, 6-2. Elsewhere, Pittsburgh got a two-hit pitching performance from Rick Russell, beat the Atlanta Braves 4-1. A couple of games out on the West Coast just getting underway. The Mets are at uh, L.A., and Philadelphia is visiting Candlestick Park out in San Francisco. Meanwhile, over in the American League, Detroit and the Cleveland Indians were postponed by rain. That game will be made up as part of a doubleheader on August the 21st. Baltimore over Oakland 9-2. The Orioles snap a four-game losing streak. Minnesota, Boston, the Sox win it 6-5 in the ninth inning. It was Toronto over Seattle 4-3. The Yankees one run better than California 3-2. Couple of games still in progress in the eighth. Milwaukee leads KC 9-1. And in the seventh, Chicago leads Texas 12-3. Ken Griffey Jr., son of the Atlanta Braves outfielder, was selected by Seattle today as the number one pick in the Major League's amateur free agent draft and immediately signed with the Mariners. The 17-year-old high school senior out of Cincinnati's Moeller High School is the first son of a major leaguer to be the number one pick in the amateur draft. It's my pleasure to announce today that the Seattle Mariners have selected as the first pick in today's amateur baseball draft Ken Griffey Jr. of Moeller High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. You know, over a certain amount of years that my father has helped me and the coaches all helped, but without them, my parents, I wouldn't be here. I guess uh, the main thing I always uh, 
tell him is uh, just staying consistent. You know, I would rather him stay consistent. If he has a good year, this try to do better the next year. So the Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Reds selected right-handed pitcher Jack Armstrong out of the University of Oklahoma. The Cleveland Indians did not have a first-round draft pick. And I'll be back with more sports. NBA news right after this. On the next Hour Magazine, Understanding Infidelity. And it started with people that I didn't know and ended up, the straw that broke the camel's back was with friends of mine. You have to realize first, it is not your fault. Meet Bachelor and 60 Minutes host, Ed Bradley. I have room in my life for someone. It's just the right person hadn't come along. Then it's cooking with Cosby's Tempest Bledsoe and man of the hour, Roy Scheider. Raisin tostadas. Raisin tostadas. I'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> Wednesday at 5. Well, it's become a familiar refrain for pro basketball fans over the years. L.A. versus Boston for the NBA title. Tonight, the two teams were battling out in the finals for the 10th time, and the Celtics are trying to become the first team to repeat as champion since the Celtics did it back in 1969. Tonight, Boston's going to have a tough time repeating as champs. L.A. just destroyed the Celtics tonight, 126-113. Game 2 will be played Thursday night at the Forum. Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Ken Anderson is retiring after 16 seasons in the National Football League. The 38-year-old Anderson says he is retiring because of shoulder problems in recent years and the fact that he has been the backup quarterback for the past two seasons. Anderson, who threw for nearly 33,000 yards in his pro career, says he is looking forward to life after pro football. Also retiring today from pro football was seven-time All-Pro punter Ray Guy. Guy spent 14 seasons in the NFL, all with the L.A. Raiders. Two-time defending women's champ Chris Everett and top seed Martina Navratilova will meet in the semifinals of the French Open Tennis Tournament in Paris. Both players easily won quarterfinal matches this afternoon. Everett beat Gabriel, or, uh, Raffaele Reggi and Martina down Claudia Cota Kilch. And on the men's side, just one match was completed. Yvonne Lendl whipped Andres Gomez in four sets. That's a look at sports for now. Lori's back after this. Women, tailored socks, designer shorts. What happened? They wanted me to work Thursday nights. Thursdays, it's L.A. Law. I told them, Thursday nights, this guy watches L.A. Law. Forget you. You gave up all of that? Wouldn't you? L.A. Law, the show you gotta watch. You know, you could have taped it. Thursday at 10 on TV 35. A national recognition program for community development and excellence today awarded Putnam County Commissioners and Phillips ECG Plan in Ottawa an award for work towards successful community and economic development. It's a HUD's way of identifying the communities and local governments who have demonstrated leadership in forming public-private partnerships. Reason for the award, a $115,000 grant from the commissioners to Phillips back in 1984. Reardon says HUD participation will continue. HUD will continue to, to be a financing partner of public-private partnerships, assisting local governments in making the kinds of investments in their future so that they will have vital economic uh, systems. Stock market fell in moderate trading today, the closing prices of stocks of interest in our area from Oberweiss Securities. Analysts said second thoughts emerged in some quarters about the designation of Alan Greenspan to replace Paul Volcker as head of the Federal Reserve. The market quickly dropped 22 points at that announcement and then recovered. But late in the day, it fell once again. Also suffering today, U.S. currency and bond prices. Analysts said traders are a little worried that Greenspan may be less likely to fight the administration on key points of economic policy, that inflation may come back. Dow dropped 10 points to end at 2278.22. Now farm prices. Good evening. In Ohio today, hog prices fully one dollar higher, fifty six seventy five, went up to fifty seven fifty. Omaha today with two thousand head of cattle. Choice steers were fifty cents lower at seventy fifty to seventy two, and choice heifers fifty lower, sixty eight and a half on up to seventy dollars. Lambs across the Midwest back down today, three dollars to four and a half lower at eighty five to eighty eight dollars even. Chicago water trade, July wheat settling two seventy one and a quarter, down three and one half, and September two seventy six and three quarters. Down three and a half poor export inspection figures. July corn dollar eighty seven and a half up by a penny and one quarter and December dollar ninety one and three quarters and plus three forecast of hot dry weather. July beans five fifty three and a quarter up three and three quarters. November five fifty nine and a half and plus eight. Prices metal futures were up today. Now as we look at the 
Chicago Merck, June Hawks, 59.75, up 30 for the day. June Cattle, 67.37, down 13. This is Ed Johnson reporting. That's all for the News Journal. Thank you for being here. Good night. WLIO Lima in stereo.